welcome to Theater Spotlight with Julio Martinez on LAArtStream.com, focusing on theater in Los Angeles, the greatest producer of live theater in the world. Actually, there are 28 plays a week opening in Los Angeles, 52 weeks out of the year. Take that New York, Boston, and London together. Today, we're going to put that spotlight on Rogue Machine, one of the most acclaimed, especially in the last two years, local theater companies, 99-seat professional theater companies in the world. It's located right here in Los Angeles. The particular focus today will be on a premiere play, at least premiere to Los Angeles, The New Electric Ballroom, which was written by Enda Walsh, who's gotten a certain amount of attention on Broadway this year. And we now would like to introduce you to the director, artistic director of Rogue Machine, Mr. John Flynn, and one of the principal character actresses in this show, an old friend of mine, Lisa Pelican. Hi, guys. Hi. Hey. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Uh, John Flynn, you have a talent, it seems, for getting rather significant playwrights to do works at this rather tiny little space. Well, thank you. Uh, I, I, yes, I guess I do. I, I don't, uh, I just pursue them, you know. Uh, <laughs> whether they like it or not. Whether they like it or not. And, you know, we do have a, a reputation and we have won significant awards in the past couple of years, which does help open doors. When I first started doing this, I would call agents in New York and I would not hear back from them. Then after a while, I would call them and they would call back in a week or two. <laughs> <laughs> now when I call them, they often pick up the phone. So things Well, that are, is because when you do good work, people do hear about it. Everywhere, it seems. And also, I, I do think, as you just mentioned, that, that the idea of what theater is in Los Angeles and how good theater is in Los Angeles is getting out there. People are beginning to understand that this is a, a place where there is world-class theater. And getting people to pay attention to your work uh, also involves getting really good people to do your work. So that's why I'm looking at you, Lisa. <laughs> Lisa. Lisa and I have known each other for a few years. I have followed her career through the movies, on stage, everywhere you go. I eventually end up. And I got to direct you. And you got to direct me. <laughs> <laughs> at least I had my guitar between us. The, uh, this particular work, how did you first hear about it? Well, actually, um, Simon Levy, who is the dramaturg and producing director over at the Fountain Theater, yes. gave me the script to read, and I read it and said, I have to do this play, and um, decided that John would be the best person to do this play. So I gave it to him to read, and he fell in love with it and said, I have to do this play. But um, at the time, uh, Rogue uh, Machine is dedicated to doing new works, works that are either world premieres, American premieres, Los Angeles premieres, but premieres. And um, when he called to find out about the rights, it turned out that the Druid Theatre Company from Ireland was going to be going on a tour and coming through LA for three or four days with the play. So They did that at UCLA. At UCLA. So it did not fit in with the mission of um, Rogue Machine at that time. Well, I could have told you just because it did three performances on a college <laughs> Well, campus. that's what I thought that at the time. I thought it was crazy, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, that's true. And uh, um, the Druid, I spoke to the Druid Theater. What, what happened is I called England and I asked about the rights after Lisa had given me the rights. And they said, well, the Druid owns the rights for two years. So they gave me the phone number of the Druid, and I called the Druid, and I spoke to the managing director, who was a very sweet guy and very nice, and he said he would give me the rights if they weren't coming to Los Angeles. Oh, I didn't so, know that. so indeed, what happened was they told me I couldn't do the play at all uh, until they were done. So then I was like, OK, well, they're doing it, and we're not supposed to do plays that have been done here. but. I saw the play, and when I saw the play, I thought, oh, I see a different way of telling this story than they were doing it, which isn't to say that 
their production was in any way less than ours. It was just different. Um, and uh, so we revisited it and we came up with this idea of doing it. And, uh, you know, about, about talent in this town, and Lisa in particular, but actually all four people, you know, one of the significant things about theater in Los Angeles is world-class actors are here. I mean, I'm, this is, I'm not joking and I'm not, you know, blowing a horn. These are the best actors in the world, and it makes a lot of sense because this is where the money is, so they have to be here. And a lot of them have these huge hearts and they love the theater. <laughs> and they sacrifice greatly, personal sacrifice, to come and do plays so that their, you know, their habit... Soul can, can be fed. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and what's kind of amazing, and what's amazing about theater in Los Angeles, and I promise you, you can get this nowhere else in the world, is you can come to a theater like this, 50 seats, you're three feet away from world-class actors, and they're acting, you know, it's astonishing. And there is no place else in the world for it. It's really a treat, and it's something people should do. They should get out and see this theater. They won't see it anywhere else. You know, there's nothing like this in New York. There's nothing like this in London. A while back, I had the opportunity to interview Robert Patrick, the sort of historic off-off Broadway pioneer. And he said that feeling that they had doing plays with people just a few mm -hmm. feet away from them wasn't duplicated in his life until he came to Los Angeles and started attending the small theaters here in town. So this is rather unique also, the fact that I have seen this lovely lady in a major motion, a couple of major motion <laughs> pictures, and then I can watch her peruse the stage just a few feet away from me. That's an amazing experience. It, it is. I mean, I was, we were just chatting a little bit before we started, you know. I first saw Lisa in a movie uh, called Julia, and I fell in love with her immediately. And the idea that I would one day get to work with her was, you know, uh, a pretty uh, distant sort of dream at the time. And the thing is, is like, that's what I mean. You get actors like Lisa, who is an extraordinary, dedicated, you know, I, I can't even find the right words for, make me cry. <laughs> for, for the kind of uh, energy she brings to performances and for, to her work. Uh, working in places like this, and you can come and you can enjoy it, and it just, you know, and all that stuff about, look how beautiful, I mean, she's an extraordinarily <laughs> beautiful woman. And Don't mind us. <laughs> yeah, she's oh playing a 60-year-old uh, woman in this place. She goes backstage, she draws lines on her face, she puts <laughs> stuff in her hair, you know, she's a shut-in. She's like, and, and she finds, you know, and all these things about actresses don't want to look bad actresses. That's all, you know, not real actresses. And, you know. I want to talk about this play a bit since you brought up her character. You played Brenda. Brida. 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 Ah. That's how you pronounce it, yeah. And uh, she is one of three sisters who are yes. relative shut-ins in this home, except for the youngest sister who does go out and work. She does go out and work, but, but the two older sisters, sisters yeah. are stay-at-homes. For 40 years. For 40 years. Yeah. And reminiscing about their youth when they used to go to the ballroom. Is that correct? Um, well, I don't know if reminiscing is the right word. Recreating? Reliving. Reliving. <laughs> oh, I mean, they're really putting, they well, get into the clothes. Uh, and... Wait till you see the play. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's, um. And if you have two 60-year-old women who haven't been out of the house in 40 years, you can imagine they have inter interesting relationships with each other and everyone else. <laughs> the playwright, Enda Walsh, who uh, has become rather acclaimed of late because of the Broadway musical Once, got nominated for a slew of Tony Awards, and it won a slew of Tony Awards, it's based upon the film Once. And... He's an Irish-based playwright, 
And your sensibility, I, I don't know whether you have any familiarity with Ireland with the name of John Flynn, but I'm, I'm just assuming you have a certain Or my, my, my red hair, I yes. might have a little yes. Irish in my background, yes. yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, Maureen O'Hara sitting next to us here. Yes. Um, yeah, no, I, uh, Inda is a playwright in residence at uh, the Druid Theater Company, which is also uh, Martin McDonough's theater, um, and uh, a number of other pretty wonderful playwrights have, have gone through the Druid, and they, uh, they seem to be able to uh, draw the right people. I think he's an extraordinary writer. I think uh, uh, people keep saying this is, you know, a potential next Beckett, and I believe that to be true. Uh, he has an amazing facility with words. It's poetry. It's he, this is poetic theater. Um, but at the same time, there is a, it is a, a totally original voice, uh, and he gets to what it is that life is about, what it is to be alone, what it is to want and desire. He, uh, he, when he won the Tony, he said, hiring me to write the book for once is like hiring Charles Manson to write a book for It's a Wonderful Life. <laughs> because he writes such bleak work, but he could not write this bleak work if he did not have a keen and extraordinary understanding of the human heart. Yeah. That's what I was going to say, of being human. His characters are so human. They're, and you can look at them and go, oh my gosh, that's no one like me. But then it's everything like me. I mean, that's, that's what I see in, in all his different characters. I don't mean to imply you have a dark side, Mr. Flynn. <laughs> but I'm thinking of some of the plays I have seen here in the last few years, like Small Engine Repair. Uh, oh gosh, Blackbird. Two, Blackbird, the yeah. two character play with Sam, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they are very dark. They are, and you know, one of the th reasons that five years ago when we got started, uh, there was a slew of plays that weren't being done in Los Angeles, and I couldn't understand why they weren't being done. They do tend to be dark, but they're also brilliant, and they're by brilliant young writers or older first-time writers. But Los Angeles needs to see those plays, and because they're not commercial in a certain way, you know, our larger theaters, at least in the past, have shied away from doing them. So I wanted to help bring those plays to Los Angeles, and that was one of our big goals. I mean, at the time, we thought theater in Los Angeles was in trouble, and a number of us got together, Lisa being one of them, and said, you know, do we just accept it, or do we try to do something about theater in Los Angeles? And that's why we started Rogue Machine, and, and I think theater in Los Angeles has changed significantly in the last five years. We take no credit for it, but I think we're part of why it's changing. I'm interested in your general philosophy of this uh, theater. This is Rogue Machine. Right. You're on Pico Boulevard. Uh, you're <laughs> housed in what has is still theater theater. Right. And you have a large space. This isn't it. Yeah. This is the smaller space. Right. Uh, you see how many in this space? About 50? About 50. It depends because this is our black box, so we constantly change. Sometimes we have 50 people in here. When we did the Sunset Limited, we had 50 people. We only had 40 for uh, Blackbird. Right now, I think we have 46. And it's the larger house is a, a 99 seat. It's house. a typical 99 seat theater. It's actually only 91 seats. You have a fairly yeah. expansive stage. Yeah. And you can do a lot of things there. What is the production philosophy here? We touched on it. You generally do only original works, whether original to LA or to the US or world premieres. That's right. And um, we're, we're looking for, you know, plays that uh, speak about what it is to be human, that, you know, somehow uh, expose, you know, I, I once said we're looking for playwrights who understand how to rip themselves apart and expose what it is to be alive. Mm. Uh, 
And sometimes it's very funny. I mean, that sounds dark and deep, but you know, a lot of these plays are also very funny. There's a lot of laughs in this play. In this play, yeah. Uh, and there were a lot of laughs in small <laughs> engine repair. In fact, for the first 30 minutes, you thought you were in a comedy, you know. <laughs> but you're not yeah. going to see Little Mary Sunshine here, I, I do not believe. Uh, not, no, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, I mean, if there's a brand new version of it, yeah. And it's dark enough. <laughs> and somebody gets <laughs> murdered in the end. <laughs> Are you the decider of what comes here? Do you, you don't do things by committee? Uh, I am the decider, and we also do have a committee. You know, ah. But somebody eventually has to make the choices. Uh, and uh, I, I do believe in benevolent dictatorship. I do think that... This is art, and art has to have an artist uh, making choices. Uh, what's interesting about this art is it's a collaborative art, so you have to learn to listen to other people. And, you know, there have been plays that I've said, gee, I really love this play, and everybody else has gone, huh? Yeah. And then I go, okay, well, we won't do that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, part yeah. of this collaborative art is finding artists like Lisa. You're in an interesting situation. If I were to follow you from play to play, you have to have a good car. You know? <laughs> <laughs> this is a very big community, yeah. and I've seen you at the Pasadena Playhouse, at the Odyssey Theater. Generally... And every different area. The colony, the, the yeah, the so, fountain. The, so yeah. unlike uh, a community theater, say, up in Carmel, uh, you don't essentially belong to a particular theater. But you know, you I, I, I've always lived my life that way. You know, when I was in high school, I belonged to all the groups. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wasn't like part of the jocks or the, you know, the, I guess there were the hippies and the, you know, the, the brains and the, I, I, I belonged in the artists, I belonged to everybody. And I think it's probably one of the reasons why I became an actor, because I just, you know, I, I don't like everything always the same. <laughs> I like to mush it up. <laughs> but you uh, have originated works you don't just wait for uh, someone to send you a script oh well you know i mean i guess in this case i i kind of did um but i really handed it to off to um john i mean I, it wasn't i didn't hand it off to him and say oh and cast me in this play i really handed him the play and just said you know, Rogue Machine needs to do this play. And Imagine you shaking him by the <laughs> <laughs> Yes. And I, I um, and actually, when I handed it to him in my secret belief, I actually thought I'd be playing a different role. <laughs> he takes complete credit for uh, casting me in, in, as Brita in this play. Um, but uh, as an actor, I think mostly we do wait. And it, it it is it is a a problem of being an actor, but I, I do sometimes find something that I go, we have to do this. It's a no, difficult I, life, you know. I mean, it is a difficult life, you know, especially yeah. if you're a single parent. On top of it, yeah. <laughs> as you uh, mentioned, you're playing an older sister in yes. this role. Yes. And this is your total environment. We're yes. in it. Yes. This is my home. How I, it looks very. Very beautifully tawdry. I mean, it's, 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 I was looking at it as I came in. Thank you. Now, so you not only get have to get good plays and good actors and good directors. You have to have people, good people, creating this environment. Do you have a staff? Do you? Uh, we, we do. We have a small, uh, vastly underpaid staff. Uh, you know, there is a couple of different sides to theater. Theater is, in its heart, storytelling. But it is a visual storytelling, and so visual art is a very important part of it. And so much more is said by what it looks like, uh, and that becomes, you, know, you do go out and you do look for fellow artists to work with. This set is designed by Stephanie Curley Schwartz, and the lights are by Lee Allen um, uh, and uh, Diane uh, Grabner did the costumes. And they, um, uh, Stephanie and Lee in particular, are people who work here a lot. Uh, they, I collaborate with them all the time. Um, 
they have done, they, they are my first go-to people usually for the plays that I direct. Did they do the set for Blackbird? Uh, yes. That set scared yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it yeah. physically scared me. Yeah, yeah. They're, well, they're they're excellent. Yeah. They're all you know. Yeah. We're very lucky to have them. And, and we work with you know. It's it's very interesting. Uh, we work with photos. We go on the. You know, it's all such a different world than it used to be, because now you can go on the internet and you can like plug it. You know, you can go to Google and you can say. Uh, lonely person under a lamppost <laughs> images <laughs> and you'll get like 200 photos that you can look at so we work we we short you know because it's hard to discuss visuals so we we often we Stephanie and I and Lee will send pictures back and forth to each other this set a primary inspiration for this set was a photo of an Irish uh, second story this was a window that was in this kind of, you know, thing. The 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 lath and the the you know the the lath sort of look of it was there in that photo, and we saw this photo and we went, oh, yeah, that's that's where we want to start from. That's the starting place, and then things evolve. You know, we realized that. The the fishmonger who comes in never gets to come into the space except later but we won't talk about that but <laughs> so so part of it was finding out a way how do we confine him you know so we think okay well we'll we'll put right at the door we'll make the door raised and right at the door we'll put a platform that confines him it also lifts him up so it's a good it's a it's it's a good visual so you know i can paint little pictures of people you know that that remind you of perhaps paintings you've seen before where this person is this size, this person is this size, this person is here, and then there's a person here. So it's that kind of work that we do with the sets. But uh, I, I'm immensely in debt to the uh, design artists that come to work with us. And also, it, it would be wrong of me not to mention uh, David Maurer, who's my technical director uh, and has been a backbone here at this theater. And he does. He, li he lives here. He lives here. Uh -huh. <laughs> He does more than figure out, okay, how can we make the doors shut by themselves so they look, they appear to be magical uh, and building the sets. He brings his own artistic aesthetics into the process and, and, and certainly lifts both Stephanie's and mine and Lee's work up. So it's a joint kind of thing. Rogue Machine, as I mentioned at the top of the show, has gotten a few awards these last few years from both the LA Drama Critics Circle, the Ovation Awards, the LA Weekly Awards. There are a lot of awards in this town, and, and you've garnered more than your share here. So in knowing this, and hopefully this show is going out to the millions who are watching it right at this moment, but how would someone be involved with Rogue Machine? Well, um First of all, I mean, uh, in terms of casting, we do announce all our casting on Actors Access. And if it's a particularly, if there's a certain kind of person we're looking for, we'll also put it on Breakdown Express so it goes out to agents and managers. So there is usually an open audition for every show. Um, the uh, membership is a different thing. Members are people who believe in what we're doing. They are not guaranteed uh, uh, to be cast. It's not like a membership company where all the, sh like Antaeus, which is an extraordinary company, but they cast everybody from within and they have extraordinary actors, so they can do that. Um, we are primarily and first uh, a playwright's uh, company, we, we're here to serve the playwright. We're here to get these playwrights seen in Los Angeles. We're here to let people know about them. So we don't feel we can restrict casting. We have to cast the best person that we think uh, is right for the role. And sometimes that's really difficult. <laughs> but you know, I'm it, assuming yeah. if someone went to your website, they can find out more expansive information. They they can, and also, and it's www.roguemachinetheater spelled with the pretentious R-E, dot com. 
Uh, and uh, there also, if, you're, if people are interested in finding out what membership is about, they can write membership at roguemachinetheater.com and they'll get an answer. You're at 5041 Pico Boulevard, which is just west of La Brea. The show that you have now, this, uh, the new electric ball is technically running till the end of July. But you had a place, small engine repair, that I swore would never die. It just, you just ran that forever and then moved it to another theater. To we did. Uh, uh, and it's going to open in New York off Broadway uh, in, at the Lortel in um, May of 2013. Um, and it also was written by a member of the company and a local playwright. And it swept, it won every best production award there is to win in Los Angeles. I don't think that's ever been done before, especially by an original play with a local playwright, although there's a couple of great local playwrights, so I could be wrong. Um, and uh, it was a lot of fun, but we had commitments. So, you know, <laughs> I mean, Blackbird was, we started Small Engine Repair as a late night show. You know, we're, we're trying to find these shows that are edgy and interesting and will draw a crowd that's willing to come out at 10 o'clock at night. Uh, this show doesn't perform at 10 o'clock at no, night. No, no, no. The, <laughs> this show performs actually at 5 o'clock on Saturday, 7 o'clock on Sunday, and 8 o'clock Monday nights. That's yeah, a, a really give an audience yeah. a break. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But we started Small Engine Repair at 10 o'clock and um, it was on the set of the Sunset Limited, which was still playing, uh, which also ran for about six months. Um, and it just took off. Uh, and then, but we had Blackbird doing here in early June, and we had Sam Anderson in it, and Sam had a commitment, so we had to do it on a, in a timely fashion. So we moved, we moved Small Engine Repair into the big theater. And it ran there for a while, but then we had The Word Begins, uh, which is a hip-hop theater play, which was coming into us, was first going to do the TCG conference and then was coming to us right afterwards. So, but it wasn't ready to die yet. So then my good friend Gary Grossman at Casellas Theater said, you want to move it to Beverly Hills Playhouse? I'll give you a deal. <laughs> and he did. And so we did. Yeah. Now, you don't just do plays here, which I found interesting. I first heard about some of your other activities when I was invited to be a participant in Rant and Rave, right. which is a one night only uh, evening dedicated to solo performers who are given an assignment of a particular subject that they have to write about. And I thought, well, this sounds fun. Who's going to come out on a Monday night? The place was packed. It, Rant and Rave is yeah. so much fun. So yeah. much fun. It is. Uh, and yeah, it's always packed. There's usually uh, the house is full to, uh, to the seams. Um, and that's, that's essentially it. We choose a topic. We ask seven people, uh, often they're writers, sometimes they're performers, to uh, rant or rave on that particular topic. And um, it's on, usually on the third Monday of the month. You can always find out when it is by checking the website. It's an event not to be missed. And once again, the website is www.roguetheater, R-E. Rogue Machine. Rogue Machine Theater. Rogue Machine Theater. Yeah. Theater. 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 Yeah. 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 And this play, this play is called The New Electric, Electric Ballroom, Ballroom by Enda Walsh. And it is running through uh, the end of July. Can you give the phone number for reservations? No. You don't know it? I have, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I have, that's why I have this. Okay. It's area code 855-585-5185. That's right. <laughs> I was going to say, is that right? 5185. <laughs> we have been wasting away. Actually, we have been enjoying this wonderful 30 minutes. It goes by very fast. It does, Thank Julio. Thank you, you guys. Uh, we've been visiting with John Flynn and Lisa Pelican of the production, The New Electric Ballroom at Rogue Machine. And this is your host, Julio Martinez, for Theater Spotlight with Julio Martinez, coming to you over LAArtStream.com. We thank you for visiting with us here, and I really look forward to our next edition of being with you and keeping you informed 
about the greatest area of professional live theater in the world, the greater Los Angeles area. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Julio. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Yeah.